Let's have a look at some stories now in the media, what everybody is grappling with today. So there's lots of coverage, of course, of the financial uh, markets. This is Le Figaro, its front page. It asks whether the drop at the start of the week was a correction or a sign of another financial crisis. Then we've got the Financial Times, its front page. Of course, it dedicates quite a lot of that to the markets, but it's also looking at a big win for German workers, the country's largest trade union, IG Metall, won its fight for a 28-hour working week. City AM here in the UK has more on Carillion's collapse. It reports on its former chairman accepting total responsibility for the contractor's demise during an awkward grilling by British MPs. The Times, uh, on its front cover, has, of course, Elon Musk's uh, rocket launch getting a double-page spread inside as well, describing the launch as the start of a new space odyssey. And finally, the Daily Telegraph, among the many with this face on it. It's a reconstruction of Britain's oldest skeleton. It says, the black man with blue eyes and dark curly hair is confounding British stereotypes. He's described as the Cheddar Man. We will explain. So Cornelia is back, as promised. Cornelia Mayer, CEO of the British consultancy MRL Corporation. Welcome back. So we have talked about this to a degree already, but it's interesting to hear uh, France's take on it, or Le Figaro even, talking about the concern that there could be a new financial crisis on the horizon. Your thoughts about that? I mean, Paris didn't do too badly, looking at the Cat Caron ending down 2.3% yeah. on Tuesday. Well, I would say it's somewhere in between. It is not a financial crisis, it is a correction, but it is an adjustment to the new normal. The new normal being interest rates rising in the US, so credit becoming more expensive, which is especially um, bad for companies with, which have a high leverage. Um, and um, and, um, and the, 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 the cheap money, you know, the, the, the bond buying of the central banks both in the US and in Europe stopping. So we are getting off that drug called cheap money and low interest rates. And I guess people at this point are really thinking about where to put their money. You know, the pension fund managers, the big fund managers. If interest rates in the United States are going to go up more than we were thinking, so maybe more than three times this year, maybe four, you will rethink where you put your money. It won't necessarily be in emerging markets. It might be in the United States? Well, yeah, it may be in the United States. It may be in Europe because Europe is going gangbusters. And what is, what's been very encouraging for emerging markets, we didn't see that drain of capital. Remember um, when they started, when they had a little ill fate at starting of ra uh, rate hikes in at the Fed um, a few years back, you saw all that money being sucked out of emerging markets. We didn't see that happening yet. So, you know, we all, at this point, we all have to be sit there, poised, wait, but volatility is certainly back. And we have been in unusual, the last few years, unusual period of very low volatility. I mean, the bull run just went on and on and on. I mean, yeah. we've been waiting for this moment for quite some time, Absolutely. haven't we? But when it did arrive, it was extremely... Yeah, uh, extreme. <laughs> it was uh, the volatility was there's this for thing called the VIX, which is a vol volatility index, which was 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 went up to 50 and then down to 31. I mean, even yesterday, the Dow was at yeah, one point exactly. down 500 points yeah, exactly. on top of the 1,173 the day Absolutely. before. Absolutely, but 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 you know, it's, it's so this volatility went. It was at, at historic highs, but um, we wanted volatility back. Now we have it back. Indeed. So there we are. We're back on track as far as that's concerned. Financial Times dedicates half of its front page to the markets. But the other half is the German Union wins a 28-hour week after workers flex their muscles in a French manner, it says. I thought that was quite amusing headline. Well, but just tell us about this deal with IG Metall, one well, of the biggest industrial unions in well, Germany. E We've been following the yeah. process on, on, on our business coverage for some, some weeks now. Well, the, the, the deal is, I mean, one thing is IG Matal is, is one of the biggest unions and it's also sort of the, the trailblazer. Usually other unions follow where IG well, Metal goes. The, this was the thinking and, and the question is, Tell us it about is, the deal, the and deal depending on the deal, is it inflation 20, busting? It is inflation busting, and it's not helping the competitive edge of Germany. Just as France is getting its, its, its competitive edge up and makes the right labor reforms, Germany is going the other way. Um, it's 28-hour weeks if you want. You won't get 
paid quite as much, but you know, tw up to now it was the French and the Germans had this 35 hour week. Now 28 hours. But it's only for those who choose to work 28 yes, hours. Yes, it's isn't only it? for those who choose to work, and where they have a concession is they don't quite earn as much as those who work 35 hours because the trade union went in there and said, oh, those working 38 hours should get as much. We also should see this against the backdrop of what's going on, the, the bigger backdrop of what's going on in, in um, Berlin right now, where Angela Merkel is trying to get together a coalition with, um, with the Social Democrats, another grand coalition. I mean, in a sense, IG and Mattel saw an opportunity here, exactly, didn't they? Exactly. They had and a it's, moment where they could broker a very they're, good deal. They're, they're, there's no government, there's, really no, there's only a caretaker take government, and, and on, at the same time, the, um, the Social Democrats are, are really negotiating very, very hard. I mean, they call this bruising here, these negotiations, they should go to Berlin. That's really bruising. Now, uh, here in the UK, many were watching the grilling of, of the former bosses, you were as well, uh, of Carillion. Uh, this is the company that it, it was a huge employer in this country, but also around the world. Uh, most of its contracts, or many of them, were with, with government here in the UK, yeah. providing lots of services to all sorts of areas of, and of, of the UK economy. building hospitals. Indeed. Now, this collapsed, it went into administration, and there were a lot of questions asked about how this company was run at the very top and why it was allowed to go under. Uh, how did you feel these former bosses do? I mean, the chairman, Philip Green, <laughs> saying, I take full responsibility yes. for this. Yes, he ta all of these people take full responsibility, but they still get their bonuses and they still get paid. They still have the full pension benefits, whereas a lot of people were let go without pension benefits. So that's not... And, you know, the, one of the, um, the, the MPs, the members of parliament, said, well, you know, Safar Khan, the, um, the, 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 the CFO of the company, was asleep at the wheel. But it was not just him that was asleep at the wheel. I asked myself, where were the auditors? There was well, they, Price Coopers, there was ENY, where were they? They also, though, will be facing a grilling as well Absolutely. about their uh, process, yeah. whether they did due, did due diligence and or not. I mean, it was this issue of them saying actually everything was fine, exactly. you know, just weeks before a profit but warnings issued. If I just might add one thing, one thing that I've seen with British companies as opposed, as opposed might say, to American companies where the internal audit function is very, very strong, in, in, in Britain, it's usually sort of the weak and the, the, the soon to be retired are in internal audit. There is a strong case to be made to the really build up internal audit. What will happen? That's the question. We talk about the fact they took their bonuses and, and dividends and various other, other elements. Uh, there's, there's public uproar about this. Many jobs are hanging in the balance. And yet, what, what will happen to these individuals who made such you know, major mistakes at the top? We, we, don't, we don't know. At this point, nothing. But, but, you know, as you said, there's so much outrage that at some stage they probably will have to say, OK, we won't take the bonuses or we'll do something. But we, we will not know. But going forward, we really should see how can we avoid things like this to happen. All right. Let's talk about Elon Musk now and his, his rocket. And just for those watching us in South Africa, and I know we've got a big audience there at this time, Yes, we know he's from South African origin, although we're describing him as an American entrepreneur. And another thing I must correct as well is, Fonzie, you've tweeted us saying, and this is my mistake, the song on the loop in the car is Space Oddity by David Bowie, not Rocket Man by Elton John, of course. So I, I do correct that as well. <laughs> we, must get these, we must get these details right, and I do apologise. So what do you make of his, his ambition in space? I mean, he's launched this rocket successfully Look. today. 50-50 chance of it going well. He's done it. Yeah, absolutely. He and at a low cost. And he gave it, when he started out on the journey, he gave it a 10% chance. And it was, it was, he, he captures the imagination of people. He captures the imagination of people to go back into space. You know, no, it will take NASA until 2030 to go to Mars. He wants to go to Mars um, with an unmanned mission um, by 20, um, by 20, 20, uh, 2022. So, you He's, and he can do that because he doesn't have anything NASA does, the, the state um, agency for, for space in, in the States. They need congressional approval. He can do it on a lower budget and he does it. He did it with Tesla, a company that still doesn't make a profit but I has know. a higher market cap than GM. I know. It's incredible, really. The magic of Musk. Uh, now, very quickly, the Cheddar Man. We've got about 30 seconds. Extraordinary. Uh, that this image we're seeing on the front page of the Daily Telegraph 
could be our our forefather. Our forefather. But, but you know, the thing here is, he was an immigrant. It just shows. At some stage, we were all immigrants somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you end it. It's quite fascinating. Curly black hair, black blue skin, eyes. bright blue eyes. The images on the front page of uh, the Daily, Daily Telegraph. Do read more detail later. Thank you so much to Cornelia Thank for coming you. in. It's so good to see you. Thank you too for your company on the briefing. All your comments.